95, you guys know how this thing go Yeah, this is your brother from another mother, no other Don't look like Danny Glover But keep it cool with you guys You guys see the phone number up at top uh, If you um, have access to a, a phone line I have the law line uh, 515-739-1448 The access code is 739 739- Two zero two. Try to give that phone a ring, and uh, you guys can tune in too as well, uh, so that we can go over this uh, roster uh, breakdown. Pretty much, uh, they the Cowboys went the way that we didn't think that they're going to go. Uh, they went with three um, quarterbacks, and they went with a plethora of, of wide receivers, as well as we can see here um, on this chart as well. They went with two running backs, and and a lot of people were saying, "Okay, law." Why did they only went with two running backs? But you failed to realize they, they got a fullback too as well. Uh, Jamez Olawale. I'm telling you, Jamez is a guy that you can flex to the H back and as well as run as a fullback and as a actual running back. So he has a plethora of skill sets within his frame, within his mind. So um, th- there's always things that we can take a look at as far as that being positive. Um it is what it is. Uh, I, I do know that they went out and got a, a veteran uh, safety, Ibrahim Campbell. Uh, nobody that you can really just say, okay, he's world class. He's going to be the guy that's going to step it up and be up. Because he was cut, I think, by the, by the uh, Cleveland Browns, also cut by the Texans. Uh, he's just a journeyman, uh, just a body. I don't know why uh, they just don't want to pull resources together to get players that's more proven than him. And I'm not even going to mention his name because you guys know who he is, right? <laughs> you guys know who he is. You know, uh, you got the reads out there of the world. We had other players out there that we could have went out and got that can help the bottom line of this team. And it's all about bottom line. If you can figure out a way to improve the bottom line on your team, you can improve a plethora of things out there. Um, like I said before, guys, uh, this is a journey now. We got one week to install the offense of what we're going to look like. We got uh, one week to see what this defense is going to look like, uh, whether it be a, a defense that's going to attack to the ball, fly up to the field. We understand the philosophy, the overall philosophy of Chris Richard. And, and I think that the only weaknesses that we have on this defense will still be, case in point, the uh, defensive tackle, the, the, the ability to play up tight, up close uh, within that front four. That's where the biggest question mark at. And then you can throw in the fact of uh, we have these issues with the uh, safety. They're going around picking, picking out parts that we really, that we really don't know that's going to fit because there's just no proven commodity. Give me a proven commodity and I will be happy. I will hush and I will just be sitting there still and sitting there saying to myself, this Cowboys team can make it far. Uh, but, you know, Abraham Campbell, uh, I don't know what he's going to bring to the team. Uh, he, he recorded zero uh, interceptions, never led the team in tackles. So he's a journeyman, and, and it is what it is. Uh, shout out to those who's in the chat box. Thank you guys for following it and tuning in to the channel and to the network. I really appreciate you all. We are streaming live now on the Dallas Prospect Um Phantom uh, and also uh, the Silver and Blue Nation and Big Game James Page. Uh, you guys can go there if you want to join in as far as the, uh, uh, you know, the, the comment sections. Uh, it will be over here on the Law Nation's uh, Facebook panel. Uh, we got Bobby McClain, Ted Mitchell, Max. Thank you for tuning in too as well. Uh, uh, who is this? Uh, Vincent Bobo. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Winchester, thank you all for tuning in on this wonderful and beautiful Sunday. All right. So let me go over to the. Um, come on. There you go. We got it now uh, over here on the chat box. Live like 95. B Rob. First person that's t- to be over here to lay it down over there. Thank you for tuning in. That let me know. That you part of the notification squad. And then we have Young, my boy Wilson. What's up? DJ Chill Will Evans. Law, what's up? Thank you for tuning in. And Mac, thank you for being part of the nation. Wiggle Bell. Hey, hey. seven pounds, seven linebackers with the question mark. Yeah, we went with that. And and, in linebacking core, it's the strength of this team during the offseason. That's that's the remarkable thing. Uh, The linebacking core um, is, is the strength. Uh, we look look at this. Um, Alan Hearns. Uh, we have yet to see a full body of work with Alan Hearns. Five year uh, starter, 
uh, out here in the NFL. We we going to have to see what he can do. Uh, Tavon Austin, we still have slight reservations on Tavon Austin. We didn't see a full body of work during preseason on him. We saw some flashes during the uh, the, the the training camps during Oxnard, but we have yet to see like a full body of work with him. So these these two guys right here alone, we have a big what you call question mark on him and and then rightfully so we should have that um down there in the mix uh don't forget about the caller number 515-739-1448 i'm <laughs> not talking about the first 48 <laughs> terrence williams we understand what he can do we we understand his knowledge of the game michael gallup uh i i think that when it when this comes down to it and this guy around week three week four maybe week five we will see like okay that number 13 now as far as the first game uh it, it, it may be something uh that we have to really scratch our heads on because he may just still be shaking off the legios he still may be nervous a little bit Noah brown i mean the hamstring monster went and got him so it's one of those things, too, that we're going to have to figure out, okay, will he be like a day one starter? Maybe he not make the 46. He may be one of the guys that we're going to have to bring about maybe week two, week three down the line. Maybe he's not going to be ready week week one. And and what we need to do is looking at the, uh, the Panthers talk this week, we're going to be looking at their film. We're going to be breaking down their players, who they have on their team, their matchups. We're going to figure out, what would be the weaknesses for their team? Now, we understand that when we plan against the Panthers, the best thing that you can do is contain and keep number one inside the pocket, Cam Newton. You got to keep him inside. So, and, and then we got to, with the Panthers, when you plan against the Panthers, it's all about momentum. If you can jump out and get ahead of, uh, uh, of Cam Newton, then you will be in the right places out there. Uh, Cole Beasley, we understand what he can do. We understand his temperament out there in the field. Now, this is the thing. They tried this. They tried this for two years straight now, moving Cole Beasley to the outside. And I've been telling you guys that the, the, the wide receivers that we developed in the past 10 years been nobody. And this is just me speaking the truth. I can speak falsehoods to you, but I don't do that right on here. I don't see Cole Beasley being able to catch the ball onto the outside still. I just don't see it. We have yet to see it during practice, training camp. We have yet to see it during a preseason game. Cole Beasley catching the ball on the outside. The last time Cole Beasley caught a ball on the outside, meaning a full route that's on the outside that he won and beat the guy, uh, was against the Chicago Bears in 2016. And, and if you think I'm lying, find a tape where uh, he beat, uh, uh, I guess, the opposition on the outside and made a pass and, made, and caught the pass. Just let me know, and, and I'll hush my mouth, and I'll go back, and we, we, will look back, we will look at that film and evaluate that film, and we'll put it out there so that everybody can see. Cole Beasley is a quote-unquote inside-only guy. He's not like the Julian Edelman guy. He's not like the um, – Wes Welker, he's not those guys. We like to put him in that box because of the way he looked like and the way he run his routes, but he's not that guy that you can put on to the outside. And I don't want to hear the fact that we we talking about we don't have a quarterback to pass him the ball on the outside. We just don't have that. It, you know, uh, it, it's just that even when Cole Beasley was playing, when we had Tony Romo out there, he, he wasn't catching the ball on the outside of the field. So that just that just his skill set. He's an inside, in, short, intermediate route runner uh, with short area quickness. And I'm telling you, he's dangerous one-on-one. -on -one. You, you have to scratch your head and you have to figure out, do you put the linebacker on Cole or do you fool around and put your safety on Cole? And then you have to understand this. Do you put your free or do you put your strong on Cole? So, uh, I mean, they came out with the best philosophy and that was to bracket covers Kobe. Uh, if I say Kobe, Cole, <laughs> Cole Beasley. And uh, when you bracket covers Cole, uh, you taking the guy that's underneath, uh, maybe a, a hard jam with a linebacker or or one of your slot corners, and then you move around and have the uh, the, the actual free safety or strong safety to float around, float him on the outside, so he can't go inside out. The best thing to beat that is actually when they when they ran the uh, Lucky Whitehead reverse sweep. You can it's hard to bracket cover someone when they are in motion and when they reverse sweep because you have so much responsibility and dependability 
on that particular player that you're trying to bracket and that reverse will free up a lot of things and then you'll see a play that's wide open down the line uh, i'm seeing a little love over here thank you guys for showing showing the hearts over here on the uh facebook panel i thank you guys for tuning in to the nation eric thank you for tuning in jamal anderson live like 95 uh malcolm and diego thank you all for tuning in yes uh cole beasley will have to step this part up on his game but it's what going into his year let's see how many years cole has been into this thing seven to eight years that's a long time guys it's hard R remember this old folks used to say this all the time uh it's easier to bend a tree when it's young but when that tree get old it's it's sturdy it's strong it's hard to bend it begins to break before you can move it now cole did say during this off season that this year this year was the first year he learned the actual concepts of route running ain't that's crazy <laughs> y'all talk about my country talking ain't that crazy you know that's so crazy uh for him to be in his seven to eight year or going into his seventh year and he's still learning the concepts of routes and we all know that cole beasley is a excellent route runner but now it's concepts that you add into that which is a remarkable thing uh shout out to my cowboys family uh you guys follow their page follow their channel they they, they shoot live videos each and every day that's wonderful um what's up jesse thank you for tuning in too as well the ghost of flatbush thank you for tuning in as well shout out to where you guys are from uh anybody from oak cliff in the house uh richardson texas let me know uh let me know where you guys are from so we can give you a shout out to your proper states and uh, cities things like that you guys know how this thing go all right so let's move it on a little bit further uh, uh dalton um this is the thing. I think we overdrafted with tight end. I think we made a move on this tight end, whereas we shouldn't have have to uh, go out there and, and get a Dalton Schultz. And 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 this is the thing. Um, six foot five, two hundred and forty four pounds. He's twenty two years old. Uh, he's a rookie. He he still got to go through his growing pains. Yes, he can block, but you know, blocking is cool and all. But we we going to need a little bit more out of you. You know, I didn't see him as a threat out there in the passing uh, game. And, and uh, you don't want to show your hand, especially when you're playing this sport, when you see number 86 roll out there and you say to yourself, OK, run, run. Let's let's load up the box. They, they're going to run. I'm not worried about this guy catching the ball out of the backfield. And, and he had problems and issues getting off the line. He just didn't show me anything. Now, they went with four uh, tight ends, uh, and I think that uh, a lot of times when you're in this situation, when you become the GM uh, or when you are the GM, you, you really, uh, when you're in the scouting department, you, you really don't want to fall on the sword and say, well, I made a mistake here, guys. You know, uh, Not saying that Dalton Schultz is, is a horrible pick in a sense, but where we got him, I think he was a fourth-round draft pick, so – it was kind of too rich for him at that point. I think that you could have got a, a legitimate uh, safety at that position or you could have got a legitimate uh, defensive tackle, believe it or not, somebody that you know for sure that you can groom and put into the inside. But that's just my rationale. I'm not the guy that's making decisions for the Cowboys. And some of you guys are going to say, thank God you're not. But it, it's just one of those things, guys. Uh, don't look for him to even start on week one uh just look for him to be around and to the mix around i guess uh, i would say week five maybe week six or seven something like that down the line that's just how it goes man and rico my god can we just pause on everything and stop what we talking about this guy rico sometimes you can have the opportunities and i have yet to read the entire uh report on rico uh, but but this is the thing by Rico making his team and, and, and by, you know, a lot of times people was very upset about the fact that he was arrested the night before, things like that. This is the problem that I have. Um, it, it sets the wrong tone. Uh, and, and they say this, you know, trouble finds ways to follow those who are in the mix or close to it. Now, I'm not saying that he shouldn't smoke weed or, or, or weed should be illegal and things like that, but there's opportunities that you have that a lot of people, I would say 99.9% uh, that's in the chat box or that's in the Facebook panel, just don't have. 
this guy can change the complexity uh, or, or the the whole entire atmosphere of his entire family by playing a sport. Get this, playing a sport. <laughs> not not digging ditches, not uh, lay, laying asphalt around, not climbing up on roofs and and uh, and, and guess putting up framework and out there in the blistering sun. We're talking about playing a sport that can change your life. And there's a difference between making a bad decisions and a mistake. This was a bad decision on his behalf, whether he was uh, not smoking the marijuana or smoking the marijuana or not having the marijuana, whatever it may be. I don't, I don't have the full details, but for you to be arrested for those type of things that's been in your pr close proximity during this the heightened moment of this team because we already know what randy gregory went through we already know how roger goodell's cast his shadow upon ezekiel elliott so there's somewhere that you have to horn in all of your i guess feelings and and things that you would do off the field and say to yourself okay my main focus is to play this sport because I know for sure that uh, I only got like a three to four window year. The average football player is three years. That if I can act right for at least this amount of time and get this money, then I can be set for life. And then after my career, I can blaze a uh, <laughs> I can blaze a bush if I want to. I can blaze and chop down trees. I can go move to Colorado and I can just uh, set up shop out there as long as I want, you know. But neither here nor there. It's just it's just what it is. He's on his team now uh, and looking at his football uh, traits, his ceiling is so high, you know. Uh, they, they have him listed at six foot six, two hundred and eighty five pounds. Uh, he's twenty four years old. He's going into his second year, going into his third or what have you. And and he's one of those guys that that we know for sure that if if he can just horn in and stay focused, he can be one of the better tight ends in the in this National Football League. But sometimes your mind, your mind get in the way, and if you don't have those those true disciplined thoughts, then then you will find yourself out the window. And I don't think that he have a, a, a long rope. <laughs> he got a real short rope with his team. Uh, Rico has played for two years and got paid. This is young Wilson. But he got paid peanuts compared to what he would get paid if he was to um, actually show up and show out young Wilson. But I feel what you're saying. Yeah, he played for two years, got a lot of money. But, but you know, his contracts are still, he'd probably be teetering right at it being a millionaire, you know. And, and that money can be here today, gone tomorrow. And we understand how that money can just go fly by real quick. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> thank you all for tuning in too as well. DJ Chill, basically, yes. Uh, Jesse Ortiz, uh, they putting Travis on IR. Hopefully, he'll pick him back up uh, uh, during the middle of the year. Yeah, uh, that would be a wonderful thing. Uh, Travis going to IR is still cool. Um, let me move over to here on the uh, facebook panel uh elite thank you guys for tuning in uh over here too as well uh, all right we got uh bail lynch is better than rush uh are you guys talking about are you advocating are you saying that we should go out and grab a patrick <laughs> paxton i think that's how you say this man's name lynch oh wow um mm, no <laughs> No, 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 no. I, I hope that's not. I hope I'm reading that wrong. But um, did, did the uh, Broncos, did they get rid of Paxton? Did they release Lynch? <laughs> Jerry's guy? Did they release him? That would be funny if we do go out there and get him. All right, so moving a little bit further on down, Blake. Um, Blake, uh, out of the guys, well, Jeff Swain, I, I think that he, he probably know the playbook more than the other uh, three tight ends out there. He, he may be the guy uh, that's going to be starting when it comes around uh, week one in the following days. He may be the guy you may see number 87 out there. Or it could be a toss-up between number 87 and number 89. Both of those guys um, are knowledgeable of this uh, particular offense. Jarwin is, is a little green with it, you know, but Jeff Swain, for sure, I, I do know that he knows his offense. You know, he, he's battling the war of attrition. If he can stay healthy, 
then we may see a little spark out of him as far as tight end sets. And, and, and on top of that, we need to ask Ezekiel Elliott who he likes to run with when he's out there on the field. You know, It's all about that rapport and continuity. So hopefully uh, we can just see a little bit better out of uh, Blake and uh, Jeff Swain. But they decided to go with these four tight ends. And, and uh, one can say maybe they should have went with three tight ends and they should have went with uh, – uh, two quarterbacks, not the three quarterbacks, but we we are talking about that once we get a little bit further on down. Uh, Cam <laughs> Cam Fleming, uh, this is the thing. He probably need to get rid of that number seventy five. He still look like the resurrections of uh, Byron Bell out there, and I just didn't like what he what I've seen from him so far. So hopefully, and I mean deep down in my heart, hopefully. Uh, we don't see him as much out there, and he can just be the swing tackle at times when it, when we need to get into those heavy run sets, and we can see him out there then. But outside of that, if Tyron Smith can have a good bill of, a bill of health, and if Lyle Collins can be healthy, we're looking at a nice little look looking uh, setup with these tackles that's on the team. So we actually have three tackles on this team, guys. Lyle Collins and Tyron Smith, and there's the swing tackle uh, Cam. Moving a little further, Tyree Robinson. Look up at his film sessions uh, that I did on him, the film sessions that I did on him. He's a guy that demands, and I'm talking about demands, uh, attention out there on the field when he was playing for uh, Oregon. Uh, he's one of those guys that, that we can say, that down the line, even looking at him, he's six foot three, six foot four ish around, around that height. Uh, he wears number 23. I mean, now that you insert him with this uh, secondary, hopefully around year two, we can see some like major growth with him when he fill out that body and frame. Uh, he's going to go through some rookie pains, but we just don't look for him to start. You know, he's a good, decent backup uh, player out there that will be beneficial to the team. Uh, let's see what we got over here in the chat box. Lynch is slow reading defense. Yeah, this is uh, Shogun Drummond. Yeah, Lynch is slow reading the defense. Uh, who else we have? Uh, Trade Sean for Earl. This is from DJ. Do you guys agree with trading Sean Lee for Earl Thomas? Give me a yes or give me a no. Because if all we have to do is really just be patient, and wait, <laughs> Sean Lee is, is 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 he may this may be his last year. This might be his last year, or you know we can just sit back and wait and let Earl Thomas come to us. He's twenty nine, close to thirty. You know, it, I think that you know somebody, some, a lot of people saying no. Some people, Alex T saying hell no. Uh, Max saying hell no. He's singing me a tune over there. Yeah, so <laughs> carrot is all over the place. <laughs> this is from my Cowboys family. Uh, <laughs> Seattle has Bobby Wagner. I don't think that they would need Sean Lee in a trade for Earl Thomas. Anyhow, that's from Stevie Mac two three. <laughs> yeah, I agree. You know, uh, they shouldn't be in into the uh, talks of being traded. Sean Lee is the voice of reasonings out there in the defense. When he, when he's out there in the field, when he's healthy, I think the win to loss ratio is like eight to one. Like. Eight to two, something like that. Like when Sean Lee is out there, <clears throat> we winning games. We are winning games. It's just that when he goes down and lay down and don't get back up, then we have these little issues. We have the uh, the Atlanta Falcons game. We have the um, the Chargers game from last year. When when Sean Lee is not in there, guys, or when he's limping and gimping around, we don't have the same type of defense. But hopefully. We, we 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 fix these little issues right there and we um we, we we fix these little issues and we have a joe thomas of the world you know we have him out there that can help us out and, and get us in the right path because joe thomas man the guy been showing up and showing out all through uh preseason and training camp and practices Number 48, I'm going to call him the first 48, <laughs> Joe Thomas, man. Uh, I mean, he he's, or, yeah, Jay Thomas, he, he's one of those guys. I say yes, Seahawks wouldn't do it. Like you said, Law Nations 2.0. <clears throat> wait till next year. This is from TYR, wait till next year. Yes, we should wait till next year. He's eventually going to come to us. Shouldn't stress it, shouldn't, should, should not rush it. Uh, David Irving. 
is a first for uh, for Earl Thomas. Look, we put David Irvin out there on the chopping blocks before all of the um, the mine situation came about, and we had a a, a deal out there for him. Uh, was it second round pick that we put that on him uh, during the draft, and nobody nobody bit to to that uh, bait. So. That goes to show you that a lot of teams, although we covet a player, a lot of teams look at it like, you know what, I would rather deal with the devil I know than to deal with somebody who's shopping David Irving that we don't know. And now we're looking back at everything. There's been whispers out there that David Irving might not play this entire year. It's going to be something else that might pop up. So all I can say is we can have high hopes for David Irvin. It, it, it just can be one of those things, but he just may not play this entire year. We can wait and say, wait till week five, wait till week five, wait till week five. David Irvin is going to be out there making, wreaking havoc and all this stuff. But we have to, as a team, just say to ourselves, count him out, make it like it. Hey, expect the worst uh, for David Irvin so that we won't be felt the, you know, we're hit with the with the blind side on this thing, and and um, and we can just move on forward forward from there. Uh, the uh, next player on this list right here is uh, Xavier Woods, um, hamstring that hamstring monster. Look for Xavier Woods to come around week three, maybe week four, uh, and um, if he can, if we can get him out there, there'll be a plus. We know what Jeff Heath. I'm, I'm already predicting this year. I'm predicting Jeff Heath had one of the better camps throughout. Um, the entire um, uh, Dallas Cowboys offseason, Jeff Heath, number 38, uh, six year starter, six year, or well, six year pro, uh, six foot one, 212 pound Jeff Heath. I, I think that this would be the year that Jeff Heath makes it to the Pro Bowl. And I, I say this because everybody flying out to the, to the ball. I, I say this because now that the uh, the cornerbacks, the defensive backs that's out there on the side, on the outside, they playing so press, they they playing so tight up on the line, that frees up your free safety to make room to to make plays and and for the quarterback to rush through his throws, you'll see him catch a little bit more interceptions this year. And I think I'm really high on Jeff Heath again. You know, I'm, I'm telling you guys, Jeff Heath, he, he's he's the he's an X factor for this defense. Uh, believe it or not. Um, Boomer Sooner, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Alex T, thank you for commenting too as well. Um, 2.0, I, I see you out there. Uh, what about hamstrings? Is this a SOB's <laughs> uh, deal here? This, hey, them, them, stram, them hamstrings, something else, man. We need to uh, craft up some T-shirts and say, hey, the hamstring killers, you know, and just put up the, the silver and blue and put a star on it and just send those T-shirts out. Uh, during uh, during training camp uh, uh, next year and say, who's going to get hit by the, the, the hamstring monster? You know, uh, Kayvon, uh, we, we understand him. Uh, he, he's battling uh, his soldier, so, uh, shoulder uh, issues right here, right now. Hopefully he can overcome that. Hopefully we can see him week one. Maybe he, he, he'll be limited to plays and you'll see a mixture of number 23, who is Tyree Robinson, and as well as Kayvon out there in, on the field. Or they may use Abraham uh, Campbell, you know, uh, the guy that, you know, they just picked up. Uh, I would do a few film sessions on him later on today. Hopefully, if I have time, time been my enemy. Uh, one of the running backs, Rod Smith, uh, is just going to be a good spell back. A guy that you put in when Ezekiel Elliott needs some win out there. And, and, and that's what Rod Smith is going to be. Six foot three, 230 pounds. You know, no guy. Mike White. Cooper Rush, these two quarterbacks right here, they didn't separate each other. You know, uh, they look exactly the same to me. It's just that if you was to go with a quarterback, you'll go with the younger guy, Mike White, since they their tags or whatever their their um, their deal. They, everybody was looking at their tape, and it seems like they didn't separate one another. It just seemed to me that Mike White was a little bit better this off season, and Cooper Rush regressed. And, and it just happened, you know, second year quarterback. Maybe maybe he going through the second year slumps, you know. It, it's one of those things where, or this is his, yeah, second year, right? Cooper Rush. So it is what it is. Dak Prescott, we know that the, uh, the, the team, the team itself, we need Dak Prescott to be healthy. And, and he, he's showing us 
throughout the whole entire ride that, that he was able to stay into this mix and stay healthy. Uh, hopefully uh, we can have that trend co to continue. Uh, Dak Prescott, we, we didn't see a full body of work with him all this preseason nor uh, training camp. We, we saw some glimpses of him trying to uh, figure out better uh, foot mechanics and, and techniques with different throwing mechanics too, too as well. So hopefully uh, down the line, <clears throat> come in a few following days that we can see the 2016 Dak Prescott. Because if not, then it's back to the drawing boards. Uh, let me, guys, uh, there's 1,184 uh, players out there. Uh, let me know if you know of any veteran quarterback, notable quarterbacks that's out there that we may still have to turn that rock over and bring them into the Cowboys camp. Uh, there should be somebody quarterback out there. Uh, that we make it take a real good look at because if we are sold on Cooper Rush and Mike White, then there's a problem. Uh, and then also we do we do understand this right here um, that when David Irving gets back on his roster, we, we really gonna have to figure out who's going to get cut. There's somebody that's not going to make this team all together when David Irving gets back. So. Keep that into the crevices of your mind. Keep that in thought. Uh, Chris Jones, the Punisher, we know he's he's solid. <laughs> he's solid for right now. Uh, we just don't want uh, him to uh, go through what Dan Bailey, Dan the Money Man Bailey just went through. You know, Dan uh, had, what, one and a half bad year, right? And the team canned him. And, and they let you know that we had, we had a different philosophy as far as um, holding on to players. Now, I do know we are holding on to Cooper Rush and Mike White right now. But we were, we were with a different philosophy. Uh, so Chris Jones, hopefully uh, he don't go with go through no weird injury and we can keep him uh, on this deal. LP Lattersore. I mean, I must tell you guys, this guy been on this team forever. I think he's one of the last guys – from the Parcells era. They're still on his team. Ain't that just amazing? 14 years, 15, 14, something like that years. Um, <laughs> are you talking about Jay Cutler out there? No. <laughs> Kaepernick, uh, this is from R. Phillips. Uh, Kaepernick uh, would have uh, would have been a, a, a great pickup for us last year. You know, um, Davis Webb, uh, Cardell Jones. Uh, I don't know. Travier, Travar Simeons, uh, or Simeons, uh, Dallas Dog. Uh, is it Travar, Trevor, Trevor Simeons? That's how you say his name. Simmons would be nice on this team. And um, if those who are out there who like Romo, you guys like Tony Romo, you like Trevor Simeons, Simeons. Um, and here's why he's a guy, he's Romo with a weaker arm, and he's Romo with less mobility, but I, I think that he's accurate and he can put the ball on the money. Now, the problem is with him, he will hear those footsteps if the offensive line cave on him. That's his problem. Uh, you guys remember week two last year, he carved us up. And uh, that's not a, a real easy task to, to do. You know, he was able to find the, uh, and of course, he dinked and dunked a little bit too as well, but, you know, what quarterback don't. So he'll be a good uh, season guy to be in the backup of the backups of, for our team. Um, but it is what it is, man. Uh, uh, or would we have to trade for him? I, I don't know if he's, if he's out there on the streets, then uh, we should pick him up. Josh Dobbs. Uh, I need to look at Josh Dobbs' tape, uh, but I think Josh. I think Josh is, is, is a decent uh, backup. We talking about backups, guys, that can help this team out down the line. Uh, Josh Dobbs may be the guy. Uh, let me know. <laughs> let me pull around to the Facebook panel, man. I really appreciate you guys for commenting and uh, putting your thoughts out here. Heath is a beast. It's from Chris Hart Jr. Yes. Jay, what's going on? The Cowboys will not, and he capitalized not, have any other secondary in the Pro Bowl. You can book that. He put hashtag book it. You can book it. This is from Jay uh, Reese. Uh, 
he's uh, he's out there. Uh, Max uh, Julian, I can't wait to see the quarterback substitution unfold. Laugh out loud. This is uh, Arturo replying to Max uh, on the uh, Facebook panel, uh, as well as Jace. Uh, if that goes down, Garrett will suit up. <laughs> Yeah, believe it or not, Gary probably be the best quarterback uh, the, the, on this team as far as backups. <laughs> All right, uh, Chris Covington. Uh, they didn't want to fall on the sword with Chris. I have yet to see anything with number 59. Uh, and and they, they picked him up. Maybe uh, they see some things that I can't see. Or maybe they see some things that we just didn't see all together, all to, all together collectively. Uh, let me know what you guys think of number 59, Chris Covington. Uh, do he deserve a spot on his roster? Is he the guy that we can really look back on and say, okay, all right, you know, it was a good pickup during the draft, and we're going to move down to the guy with the neck, the neck, the neck, LVE, number 55, double nickel, six foot four, and all this stuff, right? <laughs> Will he start week one? That answer to that question is no <laughs> i don't see lve out there um maybe 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 week four week five and he got to get out there as far as playing time because somebody is going I, we're going to hear the echoes coming down of and the whispers of saying hey you know that guy we, that we drafted with the 19th overall pick and then we kind of reach a little bit for that because we don't see anything moving around. Now, if Jalen Smith plays light out, and if Joe Thomas just continues to do what he's doing out there, and if Sean Lee just doing his magic out there, and if this guy right here, number 53, Justin March Lillard, if he continues to do what he's doing out there, maybe, just maybe, LVE can slide on by. And we don't talk about LVE and those other fashions of, of being a you-know-what, you know. But it takes time for linebackers to learn this craft. And maybe we can put a placeholder on him in year two. We can see some, like, some amazing skill sets and plays from him when um, this guy decided to hang it up, you know, Sean Lee. So we'll see, though. This guy right here, Joe Thomas, just, just, just been balling, man. Just balling. Just balling. First 48. That's his nickname, guys. <laughs> All right, the guy that everybody is going to be tuned in for the first kick. The first field goal kick. Everybody, their mama's uncle, cousin is going to be looking at Brett. And I'm not talking about Brett Favre. I'm talking about Brett Moyer. <laughs> uh, we're going to be looking at him uh, and, and, and just dissecting every move, every kick. And so far, he's been on the money. He, he When he nailed that 57-yarder, everybody was saying, okay, how can we let this guy walk? We He's going to make this team one way or another. And they decided to go with the uh, the youth versus, uh, you know, Dan the money man. And, and, and trust me, guys, uh, we hate to see uh, guys who've been a pillar of the Cowboys community, a guy that's been like, you know, lights out for us winning games with his foot and uh, methodically uh, you know even when the uh, the coach <laughs> try to freeze their own kicker he still nails those long uh, kicks but he regressed in the sense and he had a year and a half of bad seasonings and and now we have Brett so everybody's going to be looking for number two that's a cold number I like number two though I, I like that number two is a good number um, trade LVE for Earl and picks. <laughs> uh, no, don't do that. Amrit. <laughs> don't trade LVE for Earl. Earl is right around the corner. LVE got a, like a long, what if, what if this, what if LVE becomes the Earl lacquer? You know, what if LVE becomes like the real talk, you know? Like this year long, of course, he's trying to soak in all this stuff, you know, what the coaching staff is trying to bring to him. I mean, his ceiling is so high. Although I just don't like the fact that we drafted a guy and we, we're going to have to say to ourselves it's his entire rookie year. He's, he's, it's hard for him to, to find room out there on the field. But you just don't trade away. Now, 
if you do trade him to the Seattle Seahawks, uh, they will have to uh, give us a, a first round or two first round draft picks <laughs> for LBE. And I don't think they're going to do that or, or at least a first and a second or something, man. I just wouldn't do that. Too soon to get rid of LBE. This is from Sean George. Yeah, I man, it's too soon. The guy have yet to play it. What what happened if we put him in, you know, uh, week one and he picks off the ball three times? You know, would that, wouldn't that be crazy? And we're sitting there saying to ourselves, where does this guy come from? Because I can argue the same fact. What This is this is the opposite team. And, and since Odell Beckham is from my region, from the south, he played for LSU, so I, I saw the kid grew up until the guy that he is now. Um, during training camp, a lot of people was like, you know, although his expectations, remember this, you know, uh, uh, the guy that, that plays for the, uh, oh man, I forgot his man's name, but neither here nor there. I mean, all through uh, the, the, the Giants training camp that year, he had hamstring injuries and nobody saw Odell Beckham at all run routes, run plays and everything. And and people would start scratching their heads and saying, hey, this number 13 guy. I mean, we went and got a wide receiver for what? You know, that's what the Giants was talking about. And then when he started coming to the mix of playing an actual game, they saying, OK, this this guy's next level. And then he made that one catch against Brandon Hughes car and the rest is history. So. I mean, all we got to do is just sit back and wait, man. And, and let's say maybe week eight, week nine, we can start having these talks about LVE. I, I start giving some people to have these talks about LVE. Um, who else we have? LVE and Jalen Smith. Uh, <laughs> Kadeem was released, correct? No, I thought Kadeem is still on his team. Uh, they they might have released Kadeem to uh, pick up the other guy. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, this could be a, a, a dated um, chart that I'm looking at. Uh, I think they might have moved Kadeem Edwards for uh, someone else today. So it could be a dated chart because I don't think that they have. Uh, yeah, this is a dated chart because they don't have the new guy, Abram, uh, on this team uh, so far on this chart. But um, <clears throat> it is what it is. Brian Price, what is? I hope he's still on this team. And. Uh, Antoine Woods, uh, we, he needs to be on his team. Uh, Zach Martin, we understand what he can do. Uh, they have, what, one, two, three guards uh, on this team. Connor Williams, Kadeem. Uh, allegedly, Kadeem is gone right now. Uh, let me know. Yeah. Yo, today they released Kadeem. Okay, let me see if I can do a little refresh on this thing. Because I've been having this thing open. Let's see if we can do a refresh. Let me see. Refresh it. And we're going to go all the way up. We can go all the way up. And we're going to go by numbers. What I went by position. We're going to sort, sure, sort by positioning. Let's go down. Yeah, see? Abraham, <clears throat> Abraham Campbell. Four year guy. So, yeah, this is the updated deal. A little refresh, right? And let's see who they got in Kadeem spot. How many guards they got out there? Uh, one, two, and huh? Who the guy we picked up? It's this guy right here, Adam Redmond. I, I remember reading that. He's a center slash guard, so he got position flex. Uh, went to Harvard. Uh, from what I'm seeing here, he's six foot six, three hundred pounds. Uh, he's twenty five years old. Uh, Adam Redmond is the guy that we picked up. Uh. I guess he's a, a brilliant, intelligent guy. Uh, and we understand that. Uh, let's look at the reserve did not report. That's David Irvin on this list. Uh, reserve injured Marcus Martin. So they reserve in Marcus Martin. They have high hopes for Marcus and Jamil Showers. Uh, they, they they got him still on his team. And Cedric, you know, he got the Boise State insurance, so he's not going anywhere. All right, so... Mm, let's see here. Um, defensive van. Where, where were we? Uh, we were around. Daniel Ross, he surprised me because uh, this other guy, uh, Reed, number 93, he was he was showing up uh, and they, they released him uh, the, the other day or what have you. But I thought that, you know, Reed would have got a better shot. A Cajun or Can Cancun or something like that. Reed, 
he was showing up, man. And um, <clears throat> they're going to roll with uh, this guy, Daniel Ross. Uh, so not Rick Ross, Daniel Ross. <laughs> Jamez Olawale. Remember, remember that name. You know, when we see that pro uh, set, set up uh, running back set, you're going to look for number 49 and Ezekiel Elliott out there in the backfield. And we're going to see some running. We're going to see some smash mouth football, baby. And we still might go with a, a, a – <laughs> With a uh, two tight ends out of that package, which we'll, we will call a twenty-two personnel. Well, look, look out for that. You know, look out for some some stuff like that, and, and uh, we'll see that. You know, especially powerhouse football. So you can throw in Swain, and you can throw in Schultz, have Ezekiel Elliott, and also uh, number uh, forty-nine out there, and it may be something medieval. Look at that defensive tackle. Daniel Ross, and we have Malik. Hopefully, hopefully we will see him week one. And uh, Tyrone, or Tyron Crawford. Finds ways to be on this team, man. He's a he's the veteran, Dorrance Armstrong. He's still got number 74 right now. Uh, of course, we know he may not wear that number, but I'm looking for him. He was a defensive player of the last preseason game uh, had two tackles for loss, four tackles altogether, one sack. Just a guy, remember his name, DA uh, or DJ, that's what the, his family members call him. But DA is what I'm going to call him. And Dorrance Armstrong is out there. So he, he made his team elite. Rob, man, thank you for tuning in. Uh, the latest on Rico at rest. You guys are going to have to inform me on that. Or oh, Price was released too? Man. They still maybe they maybe they still like him. That's why he's still on this little deal. Uh, Cause I just saw his name, right? I just saw Brian Price. I think they probably uh, got rid of him because he was the guy that was body slammed and didn't get back up and, and showed any aggressions for that body slam. Uh, I thought I saw his name, so you may be right. Maybe uh, they got rid of Brian Price too as well. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, maybe they got rid of Brian for uh, Adam, and they got rid of uh, Kadeem Edwards for 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 Campbell. So yeah, that's about right. That's about right. Yeah. So <clears throat> two practice squad spots open. Hopefully they can put McKay on there. Hopefully McKay don't get picked up and picked up by someone else. But thank you, man. Thank you guys, man, for putting out there that Brian Price was the other guy that got released. Mm. I like big bodies inside, you know, but if, if you're a big body, and you're not pushing the pocket back, then there's still a problem. All right. So we got about seven minutes left on the docket, man. So I'm just going to uh, do a little quick Q&A. Nobody wanted to call in to the nation. That's OK. 515-739-1448. And then the access code is 739-202. You can call in and uh, put your thoughts out there, and we can go over those things um, about, you know, what you feel about the team, the temperament, what your thoughts, what's your predictions of the uh, team record is going to be, uh, what to look for week one. Uh, will Ezekiel Elliott get 100 yards week one? Is that the uh, the goal for Ezekiel Elliott? How many touchdowns would Ezekiel Elliott get? Uh, first and foremost, you know, uh, what would he do in that fashion? You know, those th those type of things. Um, it's what we're looking for uh, as far as Ezekiel Elliott, you know. Let me see if I can move this thing around. I appreciate you guys for tuning in to the nation, man. All the time, man. It's always a pleasure. But I want to pull up this chat box so everybody can see uh, what you guys are putting out there. Uh, as it relates to Cowboys content. And I'm almost there. Amen to y'all, man. Let me see. Where is it? Bam. <laughs> Got that there. Where that chat box at? Come on, chat box. And not able to put the chat box up there. I'll give it one more shot. I wish I had a... I don't have no producer here. It's just me rolling by myself, and I'm not able to put the chat box up. Uh, that sucks. <laughs> on, the str on this thing, but it's all good. Hey, maybe this is right here. No, that's not it. Oh, man. <clears throat> all right, so I'm going to have to read it out here. And uh, 
you, you're saying Sean George, 110 yards, two touchdowns. The O-line is beat up, so maybe more. Um, Wiggle Bell's giving me the, the clap on, clap off emojis. Yes, what I'm talking about. Uh, we need free safeties and strong safety too, and, and also one tech. Yes, 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 yes. Nothing but the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I try to be. <laughs> Tell me what's on your mind. What's on y'all mental, man? How many touchdowns Dak Prescott get? Or how many interceptions do we pick off, you know? We're going to keep it positive, right? <laughs> Who we got over here on the uh, Facebook panel? Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, Tony, thank you for tuning in. Kelvin, what's going on, man? The process, but... It's a process, but in the building, found the foundation. Yes, Chad Holmes. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna have to read that on the back end. <laughs> Samuel, what's going on? Who got cut today? They said Brian Price got cut today. Kadeem Edwards. Player acquisition is 365. That's every day, two 24/7. Got to do it, man. 32 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. This is from Davis Driver. Yeah, man, that would be nice, man. That, that's that's pretty good, you know. That's some good stats, man. He had 22 touchdowns last year. Are you are you adding in rushing touchdowns, or are you just saying that he's all throwing touchdowns? 32 touchdowns, because you got to give uh, Dak Prescott at least, I would say, four or five actual uh, rushing touchdowns. Dak, uh, this is from TYR. Uh, he says 26 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Seems about right. You know, um, I would say 32 total passes slash rush uh, touchdown. Ezekiel, 1,700 rushing yards, 2,300 uh, total yards, 20 touchdowns. My God, Dak, 3,500 yards passing in the air. And uh, 25 touchdowns. That, man, that ain't bad. And six interceptions. Young Wilson. Hmm. That sounds about. That sounds about cool. <laughs> Elite Rob, what's up, man? Yeah, appreciate you, man. He's like, I don't know about this beat, man. You know, got to jam out to this beat. <laughs> All right, uh, Pedro, what's going on? Last chat I had, uh, Panthers fans, their offensive line wasn't as stout. So, uh, the D should ball out. He's in his defense. The defense need to ball out. The defense need to do something out there, man. The defense should do something out there. Um, the Panthers have the best, he's saying the absolute best front seven. Yeah, put it out there, man. Personal stats don't matter as long as, long as we win what matters. Personal st stats only matter like when people try to use the debate down the line, you know. People say, well, the 8-8 eight and 8-8 eight and 8-8, eight and eight and eight and eight and eight, it's cool, but, you know, look at these stats here, you know. But that's when personal stats matter, right? We don't care about, you know, the, uh, the wins and all this stuff. Because when I was out there saying that, okay, Dak Prescott got these amount of wins and only 10 loss, and then really he only had nine loss. But, you know, a lot of people was like, ah, he still can't hit water if he fell out of a boat. Let's look at these personal stats. He can't throw the ball, you know. But I'm saying I believe exactly what you're saying. It's all about that W, winning the game. That's what matters. That's what we need to soak in and bring home is that W one way or another. Hey, this is the Dallas Cowboys 2018. This is this is the team right here. This is a fresh sheet of paper. <laughs> no blemishes right now at all. This team can be everybody on this on this uh, depth chart here can have a ring on their hand. You know, uh, you know, they, they they can be the next team. This this right here right now in the moment of time. This can be everything. So uh, we all need to have that in mind, that type of focus, that type of thought track going on. You know what I mean? We need to have that going, man. All right. So 
I'm just going to do a quick shout out to everybody who participated on the Facebook panel side. I really appreciate you guys uh, for tuning in, being part of the thing. Uh, it's always a pleasure uh, for you guys talking, uh, commenting. Uh, don't forget to smash that share button, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, join the notification squad. Samuel Johnson, join the notification squad, man. I see you out there, man. Shout out to you too as well, Chad Holmes and Eric. Uh, my guy, Kerry Teagle, Brandon Ross, Jay Riss, Tony uh, Tapia uh, Jr. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Jamal Anderson, yes, my brother from another mother. This is a good show. Thank you, man. I, I love those words of uh, just pushing my mind to the next level because we can get there one way or another. We All we have to do is step down and stump on the devil. We're going to get this thing going uh, because, hey, I would not be able to do this without you all. And you guys know that this team, there is a possibility, there's hope, there is a way that this team can pull everything together, the resources. We just need one or two pieces. Yes, we, we screw up through this team like a fine-tooth comb. Yes, we look at everything from A to Z on this team. But this team right here, this team can be the team. All we have to do is, hey, although look at the man that's clapping upstairs. Look at that guy right there clapping. We have to be the motivational factor for this team. Hey, I think that positive minds pulled together, it brings positive things. So if we can get this thing together, we will win. Think about this. Ezekiel Elliott, let's look at the positive. Let's look at the positive. Let me let me tone this down just a little bit. Let's look at the positive right here on Ezekiel Elliott. And I'm going to say this before I run. Um, <clears throat> this is the positive uh, all together. The positive aspect of Ezekiel Elliott is the simple fact that he don't have to worry about this Roger Goodell situation. The other positive thing is now that Dak Prescott, he's going into his third year. He knows the shortcomings. He lived the highest of the highest with the Dallas Cowboys when everybody said that, okay, he's better than Starby. He's better than Troy Aikman. He's better than Tony Romo. He lived that moment. Now he was shut down, kicked down, and he was stumped upon when he didn't show up in big games last year, right? So now that he knows he's been at the highest peak of the Cowboys and he'd been at the lowest. Now all he had to do is pull his resources together and just stay focused and say, okay, we can win this guy game inch by inch. And he can do that with Ezekiel Elliott. He can do that with the mindset of what he know that he went through from last year. All we have to do is win one game at a time, guys. I think that he understands that now. And this offensive line, I really think that collectively, the, the Dallas Cowboys, they understood what happened last year with the Byron Bells of the world and also the Chaz Green. Both of those guys, guess what? They're not on this team. That even rhymes. So we're going to say this right here with the Byron Bells of the world and also the Chaz Greens. They're not even on this team. We're going to say that again. <laughs> so they know that they uncovered their mistakes and they said to themselves, okay, we're going to try to uh, elevate those small end positionings. And now that we got uh, a, a Connor Williams, and even though my guy, the center Travis Frederick is out, don't, don't, don't sleep on Looney. Looney said that he has a rapport with Dak Prescott already. And Looney, he's a mauler as it comes to the run technique. He can maul over, he push you down. He's not Travis. No, he's not that. You just don't replace that. That's like that. But what I'm saying is that this team, is a run first team we will be okay in that category now as far as the wide receivers yes you can have your question marks on that but guess what the other teams do too as well so they don't know what's coming so that's that's the benefit to us they don't know who michael gallup is they really don't understand what alan hearns can do behind this particular offense and then on top of that they don't know everybody already discounted trayvon austin so I think that Trayvon Austin is a better lucky whitehead. He's a better uh, guy that can do the reverse sweep better than uh, Switz. So this is a better team collective. I do know that we can still have our reservations on the tight end play. But guess what? We still are a run first team. And I can just put, I'm not going to say I can just put any tight end out there to run a five-yard dig, shallow T option, uh, uh, route option, y, y option route. You can't just do that with any tight end. But what I'm saying here, is that now you can still at least say to yourself with this, Jamez Olawale, he can flex him to the halfback, and as well as what the uh, this team is working with with the new wide receiver coach, I think that the tight end can at least be formidable. 
just that. That's all the time I have for right now. Don't forget to share this content. Tell a friend about my page. And let's get this thing going one way or another. Peace. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. I'm out. Yeah, I see y'all, man. Subscribe to this channel, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Subscribe. Got the podcast. Join that podcast, baby. Yeah. Mount up. Grow this nation. Let's go, baby. Salute.